You're listening to Optimize et al., a technology podcast powered by Naviate. The next theme of our podcast, which is about technology making us think too much about data. So can technology make us think too much about data rather than how buildings make us feel? What do you think on that? Absolutely. Technology can make us think uh, more about data rather than how buildings make us feel. But I'm the guy who's always optimistic and always tries to look at look at every challenge from the from the positive side. Because, for example, in this case, uh, when it comes to vast amount of data, yes, I agree. Technologies are providing architects with a vast amount of data, from energy analysis to material performance. To the smallest details, uh, we now have BIM models that are providing you with so data, for example, for a door, where is the key of that door? What type of key that door uses? So imagine all those details that sometimes an architect needs to at least be aware of, uh, to say it like that. And this can be quite overwhel- overwhelming, I agree. But now comes the positive side. Where, wherever there is a challenge, there is someone who tries to solve that challenge. So for example, we have softwares that help you handle this data in a very effective way. Let's take Navigate, for example. That's the closest one to us. Navigate provides various tools that help you manage your building information and content. So it will help you handle that data and let you focus on the creative part of your work. I would like to maybe give one other example. Um, I got familiar with that software a couple of days ago. So before, uh, when I started working, I have brief, I have briefly worked on some digitalization products. So where that process was very time consuming and tedious, you get a very low quality 2D drawing or a low detail uh, point cloud, and you have to create a 3D BIM model out of it. Reading all of that data was so frustrating. And a few days ago, uh, I became more familiar with a software that we actually here in Walter Code are developing. It's called BIM5. The purpose of that software is to automate the digitalization process by using machine learning algorithms and whatnot. Uh, and in the end, you give it, uh, basically, you give it 2D drawings and it gives you a 3D model by u- utilizing these algorithms. So what I'm trying to say is, even though there is a lot of data out there for architects to understand, to be aware of, there are softwares that can help you deal with that. So so and again, the, the adoption is the key. So we need to find effective ways to adopt these softwares. Yeah. So again, it's kind of going back to the coin, isn't it? You know, there's two sides to is oh, data... Sh- Always going back to going back to that coin. Oh dear, where's that coin? Um, yes. But yeah, there's two sides to this. Where data is crucial in terms of, like you mentioned, you know, the door data. Where can I find information behind that door? Could be manufacturer. It could be the material used, sustainability kind of values, and and things like that. But at the same time, the other side of the coin is, you know, are we spending way too much time inputting that data instead of spending that time on design flair and and improving the way that we design because you know there's 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 that kind of um are we really wasting our time here or how is this time valuable uh for for us to it's valuable for example when you're firefighting and you need to go to a building and you know where things are or it's, it's valuable for when you're trying to replace your boiler and and you've now got that data but are we wasting our time here do you think or do you think actually? I read a really interesting thing uh, a few days ago, I, quite connected to this question. Uh, the new style is no style in Ooh. architecture. Oh. So before, in the past, <laughs> yeah, this was quite catchy to me. Then I had to read everything through it. Before, or in the past, architecture was all about culture, all about. Uh, criticism based on feedback from that time period where the architects lived. Uh, 
Gothic architecture was quite religious. Uh, then comes uh, some modernism and postmodernism architecture that very much focuses on the function. But now we are in an age of technology and in an age where we have so important problems to deal with. First of all, climate change, uh, poverty, overpopulation, where it doesn't matter how the building is designed. It matters if it's comfortable to live in, does it protect you from uh, environmental impacts, and does it provide you the efficient way to live inside. For example, in terms of things, there are so many buildings out there that are uh, incorporating those kind of technologies yeah. that can help you with your mind. You can turn on and off the lights. I'm not going with it too much into details, but... But it is where, you, where we're heading. <laughs> that's where we are heading. So to yeah. create a um, connection between the building and us in, in a way where we utilize technology. So it's not more about... Uh, how the building feels, but rather, is it livable? Is it comfortable to live inside? So maybe I'm not 100% uh, right on this, but I kind of agree with that uh, phrase. We don't need a style anymore. We just need the smartest way to build a building uh, in order to keep our environment safe, for example. That's wow, imagine in the future, people looking back at this era when, you know, we're long gone and and people looking back to say, how, the way that you just look back to say about Gothic architecture and they say, that was the, the years of when there was yeah. no style. You know? Yes, yes. <laughs> imagine, that that will be quite, yeah. Okay, so th it, goes, it goes very close to one of my personal themes, actually, Mehmet, which is the plan is to have no plan. So, you know, yeah, so it goes very close with my with my motto. So, um, you know, the style is to have no style. It'd be really interesting. And and I suppose when you really look around, you know, at it, it, cities like Dubai and yes, there's these kind of very extravagant buildings. But when you really look down at them, you know, from from a point and you just think it's very squarish, it's very boxy, just glass. Glassy. <laughs> very glassy. Sometimes classy as well, but there we go. I had to put in a bit of a rhyme there, but anyway, yeah. you couldn't resist. Sorry, Mehmet. There is so much happening be behind those buildings, so much technology, so much science behind that, uh, that if you imagine having a building, how much is Burj Khalifa high? I think it's I like 800. He's going to ask me that question. 800, 900 meters. I don't know. Imagine a skyscraper that high and they're trying now to build a skyscraper that's thousand meters high so but there is so much technology behind that uh, that the architect has to focus on that data rather than on the style itself with great power comes responsibility so here if we relate that kind of term or, or that phrase back with the way that buildings are going now, we now have a greater number of levels in a building. Mm -hmm. So there comes that responsibility, there comes that need for data that we might not have needed in the past where, you know, the highest might have, a building might have gone is three levels or something. Now we've got mm -hmm. 333 levels almost, you know, we've got so many to, to go elaborate, you know, you've got so many levels, you have to have that data and that data is becoming important. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, yeah uh, I think in the end, uh, even before data was very uh, important, uh, but it was perceived uh, in a more, uh, but yeah, not, there was not that much data as there is today. So we have so much things documented around everything when it comes to architecture before only specific, uh, yeah. I don't know where I'm getting with this. Yeah, be, be, be previously only specific uh, data was needed. You just needed to know only three, specific three doors, you know, to a exactly. building. That's all you needed. Exactly. Exactly. Nowadays, we've got three, 33 doors and, you know, where's the, where's the different sizes, which doors need the panels, which ones doesn't. Whereas previously we had less options. 
now we've got more options so we need to control that in some way isn't it yeah okay thank you very much for that mehmed coming up next on optimize et al